Hi folks, Sam from the Danger Planet here, and welcome to another Malifaux Masterclass. This is the show where we talk about concepts in Malifaux that will help you level up your game and take you to the, the next level of performance. Now, this is a series that's mostly aimed at people who have started off Malifaux and are trying to maybe level up a bit. But hopefully, if you've been playing for a while, there's still something here you can use. Uh, but if you're new, this is definitely aimed directly at you. So keep watching, because today we're going to learn about managing your hand. So in Malifaux, one of the key components of the game is your control hand of six cards. Today I'm going to talk about all the different things you can use that hand for and different considerations during the course of your turn where you're thinking about managing your hand. So as you can see I've drawn a hand of six cards here and I've also got a little bit of a game set up. We're going to be playing as Yedza 2 and the secret keyword and we're going to be playing into Tony Ironsides and the MNSU keyword that I've got here. So looking at my hand you can see I've got mostly pretty bad cards although i do have 112 which is pretty great what we're going to talk about is all the different things you can use those cards for and when it's appropriate to use one card over another so when you when you read the rule book and look at your control hand it tells you your hand is for cheating and that's true to an extent but in my mind there's really four things that you can use your hand for those four things are cheating on attacks cheating on TNs, discarding for personal effects, and discarding for your opponent's effects. So we're going to go through those one at a time. Uh, but I want to start with some more basic concepts. The first thing is to think about card velocity. Card velocity is the ability of your crew to either draw new cards or cycle the cards you've already got. Now when I say cycle, I mean an effect that makes you discard a card and draw a new card. There are a lot of effects that draw and a lot of cycling effects in the game, but different crews have different strengths. Yedza, for example, has very little card draw in her crew. In fact, of all the models that are here, I don't think any of them just draw a card. However, she has a lot of card cycling. She can do it with Off the Path, Sophie can do it with her Chronicle ability, and Austera and Twiggy can do it with Nature's Rejuvenation. When you cycle a card, that means you discard a card and draw a new one. That's relevant because it lets you improve your hand. As you can see, I've got some pretty crappy cards here, but hopefully we'll be able to improve them. So let's talk about those four uses. The first thing that I think is what pops into most people's heads when they think about their control hand is cheating on your attacks. If you really want an attack to hit, you need to cheat from your hand to make sure that it does. In this case, uh, for example, I've got Yedza engaged with Ironsides. Now, Ironsides, as you know, is very, very durable. But Yedza is one of the few masters in the game that just does irreducible damage. And so you actually have a decent shot at taking out Ironsides. However, to do that, you need to make sure your attacks hit. Looking at my hand, I see this 12 of Masks. That's the best card in my hand. And that's the card that I would use to cheat to make an attack hit. Usually, in order to make an attack hit, you need a very high card, 12 or 13. You can look at your stat and your opponent's stat. Uh, for example, if you're a stat 6 and your opponent is a stat 5, then probably uh, a 12 is enough to make sure you hit, because even if they have a 13, you'll still hit. Later in the turn, as well, they're likely to have spent their good cards, and so maybe a slightly smaller card can work. For example, if you've been cheating and your opponent's been cheating all turn, and you've seen them spend a 13 out of their hand, um, and you have an 11 or even a 10 and they've got only one or maybe two cards left maybe that 10 or 11 will be a little bit uh, more successful have a, a good good odds of guaranteeing the hit but sometimes an attack can't wait until the end of the turn you have to kill the model before it activates in those cases you'll really want those high cards so that's really where i'd spend this 12 making sure that attack hits at the start of your turn you really need to think about what attacks absolutely must hit now that won't obviously be apparent uh, at the start of the turn in every case, but you, I think at the start of most turns you'll have a pretty good idea of what attacks you plan to make that turn and whether you need them to hit. Uh, the other thing that I would say is that while technically 
uh, focusing or getting a plus twist in any other way doesn't actually make it easier for you to cheat uh, in the sense that you still have to spend a card from your hand. If you're focusing or getting a positive twist, you're more likely to be winning the initial duel, which means your opponent will have to cheat first. And that's always beneficial because then you can see whether or not it's worth it to cheat. So for example, say you've got only your highest card in your hand is a 10. If you cheat that 10 to make an attack hit, but your opponent has you know a 12 that can make your attack miss, then you just wasted a pretty good card. But if they have to cheat first, they can cheat that 12 and you can say, oh, this 10 won't help. I'd better keep it. So that's the first way to use cards, to make attacks hit. The second way to use cards is also cheating, and that's for TNs. Now, Yedza, for example, wants to summon a Moor Wraith on every turn. To do that, she needs a five or more of crows. Looking at this hand, I've only got one crow, and it's a nine. So that's good. I could use that card. However, there's also soul stones. Soul stones can be used to build in suits. Uh, normally, I would say a hand card is a much more uh, important resource to spend than a soul stone. Soul stones are very rare. You, most crews can't generate more of them, so you want to save them. Hand cards, you get six new ones every single turn. However, there'll be circumstances where you really need to soul stone. For example, I really want to drop a scheme marker with Austera and Twig's bonus action. Uh, I can't do that with any of the cards in my hand except for the 9 and the 12, and I really want to spend that 12 on an attack. Therefore, if it's really important for my game plan for the turn that this bonus action goes off and then I drop a scheme marker, I think in th that case I might just use a crow, or use a soul stone to give Yedza 2 a crow, and spend this 5. So that's cheating for TNs. You also have to remember you need to hit your, your number. Uh, the Damned, for example, has a leap. And I really want that leap to go off because right now, the Damned is basically nowhere. He's not contributing to the game. Maybe he just got finished killing a gunsmith or something over here. But I really want the Damned to go in and kill Mouse. In order for me to do that, I pretty much need the leap. So what I would do in that case is cheat in this six. You only need a six to get the damned leap to go off. But that means I need to look at this map, look at the six and say, I'm saving this card just in case I need it. Uh, other times when you might need to cheat are uh, attacks that you can only do once per turn, but need to hit. Amina Nadu is a really important model for this crew. She's got powerful auras and powerful actions. As long as she's alive, it's really annoying to deal with the, uh, the MSU keyword because they all count as being at below half health for their grit abilities, and she can even print soul stones. Uh, now, the Grave Goo has the ability to just take her off the board with uh, its engulf action, but that's a bonus action, so it can only do it once. Therefore, I might need to cheat a very good card, maybe even this 12, to guarantee that it hits. These are all considerations you need to have, and notice I've only got one 12 in my hand. So I've only got, I can only make one of these two attacks hit. Part of managing your hand is looking at the start of the turn and thinking, what are the activities that my crew is doing this turn that absolutely have to succeed? Those are the ones I'm going to spend cards on. And I'm now going to tie this back into card velocity. If you have really good card velocity, you're drawing lots of cards, then maybe you can say, all of my actions need to succeed. I need the damned to leap, and I need to summon a moor wraith, and I need to engulf Amina Nadu, and maybe I also need to get Astera and Twiggy's scheme marker down, and I even need to get off Bell of the Vagrant with Sophie, and uh, I need to light a lamp with the lamp lighter. All these different things. If I had enough card draw, I could do them all. But some crews, like Yedza's crew, don't have all that card draw, and so you have to pick and choose. Knowing what to what extent your crew can pick and choose between the things it can do versus just doing them all is a very important part of getting good with that crew. It's an important part of leveling up your game in Malifaux. So once you have a sense of how many cards you're going to draw on a turn and how much, how many resources you're going to have available to make your actions succeed, you can say, maybe I can count on literally getting everything done, or maybe I just have to pick the most important things and focus on them. So that's cheating. But there's really other things you can do with your hand, and a lot of that is discarding. For instance, Howard Langston here has an execute. That means if he hits a model with that trigger and they don't have a card to discard or a soul stone to discard, 
they just die. I really don't want that to happen to Mikhail. He's an important tank model. And I don't really want to spend a soul stone because it's a lot more valuable. So I'm going to keep some cards in my hand just to discard. For example, this two. Not a very good card, but if you discard it, it keeps Mikhail alive just as well as if you discarded the 12. This is all relates to the concept of what we call hand pressure. Hand pressure can come from your opponent or it can come from you. And hand pressure basically means how hard are you being pushed to use the cards in your hand? For example, uh, your opponent might have a lot of triggers like execute. They might have abilities like a year in a minute from 33, which causes you to discard a card or gain slow. They might have abilities like the front of Damien Ravencroft's card, where if you try to uh, declare an action, you've already declared this, act or this activation. You have to discard a card or the action fails. These are all hand pressure. And hand pressure is very important to keep in mind because it affects your card velocity. Say I'm playing a, a crew with a lot of card draw. Uh, just as a good example, that would be, you know, Von Stuck's Transmortis keyword. They draw lots of cards. I might think, great, I've got so much card velocity, I can just hate cheat to hit all my TNs. But if your opponent is playing a crew with a lot of hand pressure, you can't do that. For example, Ulix 2 has a lot of hand pressure with his bow. Uh, his bow is every time it hits uh, an opposing model, they have to either discard a card or gain Adversary Beast. And if they already have Adversary Beast, they can't gain it again, so they just have to discard a card. Ulix can shoot three times, and he can have Hog Whisperers force him to shoot two more times each. And so when you have Ulix going, shooting his bow over and over and over, you can put enormous hand pressure on your opponent. If you're under that kind of hand pressure, you can't necessarily just cheat however you want. You have to say some of those cards you're drawing uh, to, to respond to that pressure. The other source of hand pressure is internal. A lot of times you will have effects that require you to discard a card. Now Yedz's crew is a lot of that. Mikhail can discard a card to clear a condition. So say he's been in, uh, afflicted with, you know, some kind of negative condition, slow or stunned. I don't want to be slow or stunned while I'm fighting Howard. I need all my actions and my triggers. So I would discard a card to clear that. Now, the other cool things this crew can do is discard cards for positive effects. Say, Austera and Twiggy. Um, as you recall, my hand was pretty bad this turn. But if I go with Austera and Twiggy and say Nature's Rejuvenation, I'm going to discard these two cards and draw two new ones. These are both improvements for sure, even if a five is not that impressive. Yedza, likewise, can use Off the Path, and she can discard a couple of cards. draw two new ones. All of a sudden my hand's looking a lot better than it was before I started cycling. So that's an important consideration when you're uh, when you're playing a crew with a lot of these discard effects. That's a form of hand pressure and you need to be ready for that hand pressure and have cards available to it. Especially later in the turn as you start getting low. Say I've cheated that 12, I've cheated that 9, and I've cheated that 6. If I now have hand pressure into me, the first card I'll discard is this three, but I might have to discard these tens, even though I'd rather cheat them. Another big part of getting good at managing your control hand is figuring out when you can save a card to cheat and when it's more important to discard it. There will be times when you don't want to do it, but you have to discard a severe card because the alternative is losing a powerful model to execute or just not being able to trigger an important effect. You'd obviously rather be able to cheat those cards and, and secure hits, but you have to do what you have to do. Now we're going to talk just a little bit about your deck. Um, at the start of each turn, you draw six cards. That means there are times when you can save severes in your hand, especially card crews that turn one can do a lot of card cycling and drawing. They can sculpt a really good hand. But the more cards you save in your hand, the fewer draws you get from your deck at the start of your turn. The way, one way to think about it is your deck gives you six draws every turn, but if you save cards, you're willingly giving up some of those draws. Now, sometimes that'll be correct to do. You know, you don't want to just throw away a 13 on a crappy attack that doesn't matter just because you know you're going to redraw a card, because you're probably not going to redraw a 13. But it does mean you should think about spending those cards in your hand, because while they're in your hand, they're not really doing anything. All they're doing is sitting there being potential. Once you cheat them, they're actually having an impact on the board. They're taking models off the board, they're putting points on the board, and they're giving you positional advantages. So it's very important to use the cards you've got 
both because it allows you to actually affect the game and because it lets you take advantage of those draws. The last thing that I'm gonna talk about is jokers. Now, there's only two jokers, obviously, the black and the red, and both of them are pretty unique in the way they impact the game. Um, having them in your hand is pretty good. If the black joker is in your hand, you cannot flip it. That's why sometimes when I'm playing, I will keep the black joker in my hand if I draw it, especially turn two, turn three, I'll keep it because I really don't want to hit it because you could lose games from hitting the black joker in the wrong place. You may be tempted to discard it because it's a crappy card. And while it's in your hand, you really only have a five card hand or six card hand if you have arcane reservoir. But keeping it does have some advantages, namely that you'll never flip it. Similarly, the red joker. The red joker is very, very, very strong. It can basically guarantee that you succeed in a duel. Flipping the red joker is better than cheating it because if you flip it, your opponent can't cheat at all, but it's still pretty strong to cheat. Now the temptation when you have the red joker in your hand is to save it for the absolute perfect moment. People dream of cheating in a red joker for damage flips, which when you do it will feel incredible, but it's not always what you want to do with the joker. If you end the turn with the red joker in your hand and you had a chance to use it, that's pretty bad. Generally, you will only get a chance to flip five red jokers per game. Now, sometimes you'll shuffle through your whole deck and you'll get the red joker twice in one turn. And I've done that and it feels incredible, but usually that won't happen. So the maximum number of red jokers you can have in a game is usually five, one per turn. If you save the red joker in your hand through a whole turn and don't use it, that means you reduce that number by one. Generally, if you have the chance to use it, you really want to, because that puts it back in the deck where you can use it again. Now, don't just throw it away. It's the red joker, after all. Use it on an important action. But what I'm saying is you shouldn't feel shy about cheating the red joker if you have it, just because you think you might get a better chance to use it later. I think I might get a, a better chance to use it later does not match up to I know that I have a good chance to use it now. So that's how to, to think about jokers, black and red. Let's recap a little of what we talked about. Your hand of six cards is an important resource, but it's a potential resource until you start using those cards. You can use those cards for a number of things. You can cheat to make sure attacks hit. You can cheat to make sure that once per turn actions succeed. You can cheat to hit TNs, both suit and number. You can discard to prevent yourself from suffering effects that your opponent has. And you can discard to activate effects that you have. These are all the different things you can do with your hand, but because you've only got six cards, you generally can't do all of them. You have to pick and choose and prioritize. At the start of your turn, you should look at the board and think, what are the actions that I have that need to succeed this turn? Does Yedza need to succeed in hitting Ironsides? Does the Grave Goon need to succeed in burying Amina Nadu? Does the Damned need to succeed in its leap? And does Mikhail need to use a, a, a card to clear a condition on himself? You'll have to prioritize and rank those based on the current game state, and you'll have to be willing to revisit and adjust those rankings as the turn plays out. Another thing to think about is your card velocity. Are you drawing a bunch of cards? That maybe means you can afford to cheat on pretty much all of your little TN duels. Are you cycling a bunch of cards, that is discarding bad cards and drawing better ones? That means maybe you can afford to cheat on those attacks because you'll, you'll have more big, powerful cards coming. And finally, remember the jokers and remember the fact that you draw six cards per turn. Cards in your hand are meant to be used. You should save them for when they're gonna be the most impactful, but you shouldn't be like one of those people who saves all of the revives in a video game until the final boss fight, because you're not gonna use them all. You should be using your cards over the course of your turn as the opportunity arises for a card cheat to affect the board. And you could put yourself in a better position by getting plus twists on duels so your opponent has to cheat first and just managing your hand well so you know when you can afford to use a card and when it's okay to let an action fail because you have a, another action coming up that needs that card and is more important as you get practice with these things they'll become more natural to you you'll start to really understand as you play more and more reps with a single crew what actions that crew has that must succeed and which ones are less important and you'll learn what, how much discard pressure your, your crew puts on you and how much card draw velocity you have to counteract that pressure. As you develop these skills, I think you'll find yourself leveling up as a Malifaux player. 
I hope this video is informative to you and useful. Learning to use your control hand is a really important part of playing Malifaux, and it's something that other games don't prepare you for because most other games don't have something like the control hand. There's really no substitute for experience, but if you go into a game thinking about the things I talked about today, you should be able to put them into practice and see how they improve your game and really level you up as a Malifaux player. If you like this content, please give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. We've got lots of great Malifaux content, ranging all the way from the Malifaux Masterclass, like this, to videos uh, that are with battle reports, tier lists, faction focuses, and other content where we talk about the game we like so much. We'd also encourage you to join our Discord. We have a lot of discussions there about Malifaux and other games, and you can find a link in the description. We're a welcoming community, and we'd love to have you join. And if you had thoughts about this video or other uh, famous card cheat stories, everyone's got one, please leave them in the comments. Until next time, thanks for coming by the Danger Planet. Goodbye.